This list of unsolved deaths includes notable cases where victims have been murdered or have died under unsolved circumstances, including murders committed by unknown serial killers. The mysteriously deceased are listed chronologically by year. 4. Serial killer cases which span multiple years, entries are listed under the year the first murder took place. Unsolved Murders Before 1800 Dagobert II, 679, he was one of the last kings of the Merovingian line, murdered by persons unknown in the Ardennes forest on December 23rd. Giovanni Borgia, 2nd Duke of Gandia, 1497, his body was recovered in the Tiber with his throat slit and about nine stab wounds on his torso. His father, Pope Alexander VI, launched an investigation only for it to end abruptly a week later. Theories range from the Orsini family to his own brothers, Cesar Borgia and Geoffrey Borgia, having committed the crime. Moctezuma II, 1520, Aztec Emperor, according to Spanish accounts he was killed by his own people, according to Aztec accounts he was murdered by the Spanish. Robert Packington, 1536, likely to have been the first person murdered with a handgun in London. Expatriate English royalists are believed to have ambushed and murdered Isaac Doris Laus in 1649, then a diplomat representing the interests of the Commonwealth to the Dutch government at The Hague, in retaliation for his role in the trial and execution of Charles I. But no suspects were ever identified, although some royalists later boasted of having taken part. Sir Edmund Barry Godfrey, 1678, he was found impaled on his own sword and strangled at Primrose Hill, London. Three men were hanged, but later the witness statement was found to be perjured. Alessandro Stradella, 1682, a famous composer, he was stabbed to death at the Piazza Banchi of Genoa. His infidelities were well known, and a nobleman of the Lamellini family may have hired the killer, but this was never proven and the identity of the killer was never discovered. Jean-Marie Leclerc, 1764, a renowned violinist and composer, he was found stabbed in his Paris home. Although the murder remains a mystery, his nephew, Guillaume Francois Vial, and Leclerc's ex wife were considered as main suspects at the time. Although the colonial authorities in Pennsylvania at the time investigated the two December 1764 Paxton Boys massacres of defenseless Conestoga communities near present day Millersville as a criminal mass murder, they were never able to identify the perpetrators, and historians have not been able to either. 19th century Mary Rogers, also known as the Beautiful Cigar Girl, her body was found in the Hudson River on July 28, 1841. The story became a national sensation and inspired Edgar Allan Poe to write The Mystery of Marie Roget, 1842. Fanny de Choiseul Praslin, wife of French Duke Charles de Choiseul Praslin, she died shortly after a beating and stabbing in the family's Paris apartment on August 17, 1847. Her husband was arrested, but committed suicide during trial, protesting his innocence all along. No other suspect has ever been identified. The scandal caused by the case helped to provoke the French Revolution of 1848. Thomas C. Hindman an American politician assassinated by one or more unknown assailants on September 27, 1868. The assassins fired through his parlor window while he was reading his newspaper with his children in Helena, Arkansas, United States. Alexander Boyd was the county solicitor of Greene County, Alabama, who was lynched by the Ku Klux Klan on March 31, 1870. His murderers were never brought to justice. Robert V. Richardson, 49, an ex-Confederate general officer was killed in 1870 by a shotgun blast outside a tavern he was staying in at Clarkton, Missouri. The identity of his assailant and motive are unknown. 
Benjamin Nathan, 56, a financier turned philanthropist, he was found beaten to death in his New York City home on July 28, 1870. Several suspects were identified, including Nathan's profligate son Washington, who discovered the body along with his brother. None were ever indicted, and the case remains unsolved. Juan Prim, a Spanish general and statesman, in December 1870, he was shot through the windows of his carriage by several unknown assailants and died two days later. In 2012, his body was exhumed, the ensuing autopsy showed he may have been strangled in his deathbed, but results were deemed inconclusive. Sharon Tyndall, former Illinois Secretary of State, was robbed and shot fatally as he walked from his house in Springfield to the train station nearby early on the morning of April 29, 1871. No suspect was ever found. Henry Weston Smith, 49, a minister, was found dead on the road between his home in Crook City, South Dakota, and Deadwood, where he was going to give a sermon, on August 20, 1876. While he was not robbed, it has never been established who was responsible for his death, and what their motives were. George Calvo Corises, Greek-American naval commander and explorer, died of a gunshot wound while returning to a ferry boat on June 3, 1872, in Bridgeport, Connecticut. The insurance company claimed it was suicide, and while it eventually settled with his family the case has never been solved. Martin DeFore, 73, an early settler of Atlanta, Georgia, was along with his wife the victim of an unsolved axe murder on their farm on July 25, 1879. Two trials in Canada's Black Donnelly's Massacre, in which five members of a family of Irish immigrants were found murdered in the ashes of their Ontario farm after an angry mob attacked it on February 4, 1880 allegedly as a result of feuds with their neighbors, resulted in all the suspects being acquitted. John Henry Blake, 74, agent for one of Ireland's more despised British landlords, was shot and killed along with his driver on their way to Mass outside Locria on June 29, 1882. The case received considerable attention at the time because Blake's boss, Hubert de Berg Canning, second Marquis of Clan Ricard, was a nobleman. Although his wife survived the attack, she was unable to help identify any suspects, and the case remains unsolved. The Whitehall Mystery In 1888, the dismembered remains of a woman were discovered at three different sites in the centre of London, including the future site of Scotland Yard. John M. Clayton, American politician, shot and killed instantly by an unknown assailant on the evening of January 29, 1889 in Plumerville, Arkansas, after starting an investigation into the possible fraud of an election he took part in. After his death he was declared the winner of the election but his assassin was never found. Andrew Jackson Borden and Abby Durfee Borden, father and stepmother of Lizzie Borden, both killed in their family house in Fall River, Massachusetts on the morning of August 4, 1892, by blows from a hatchet. In the case of Andrew Borden, the hatchet blows not only crushed his skull but cleanly split his left eyeball. Lizzie was later arrested and charged for the murders. She was the only one in the house at the time of the killing of Mrs. Borden. Lizzie and the maid, Bridget Sullivan, were the only ones in the home when Mr. Borden was killed. She was acquitted by a jury in the following year of 1893 and the case remains unsolved. On August 9, 1894, a train was deliberately derailed in Lincoln, Nebraska, killing 11 passengers and crew. Evidence at the scene showed signs of sabotage. The following year, a local man was convicted of second-degree murder. Doubts about his guilt led to his parole in 1910 due to lack of evidence, no other suspects have ever been identified. The Gatton murders occurred 1.5 miles, 2.4 kilometres, from the rural Australian town of Gatton, Queensland, on December 26, 1898. 
Siblings Michael, Nora, and Ellen Murphy were found deceased the morning after they left home to attend a dance in the town hall which had been cancelled. The bodies were arranged with the feet pointing west and both women had their hands tied with handkerchiefs. This signature aspect has never been repeated in Australian crime and to date remains a mystery. 1900-1924 William Goebel an American politician who was shot and mortally wounded on the morning of January 30, 1900 by an unknown assailant in Frankfort, Kentucky, one day before being sworn in as governor of Kentucky. The next day the dying Goebel was sworn in and, despite the best efforts of 18 physicians attending him, died on the afternoon of February 3, 1900. Goebel remains the only state governor in the United States to die by assassination while in office. Rose Harsant, a six months pregnant maid who was stabbed to death on June 1, 1902 in Suffolk, England by an unknown assailant. At the time it was alleged that the murderer was a preacher of the primitive Methodist chapel named William Gardner, who was having an affair with the victim. Gardner was tried twice for the murder but each time the jury failed to reach a verdict. The case has been investigated in BBC One's Julian Fellows Investigates. Al Swearingen, 59, famous as the operator of the Gem Theatre brothel in Deadwood, South Dakota, was found dead in a Denver street of a massive wound to his head on November 15, 1904. No suspects were ever named. Elsie Sigal, 20, found strangled inside a trunk in an apartment in New York City's Chinatown on June 18, 1909, nine days after she had last been seen. The resident of the apartment, who had been having a love affair with her, was considered the prime suspect but was never arrested. Elsie Perubek, the five-year-old daughter of Czech immigrants is thought to have either wandered away from her home or was kidnapped in Chicago on April 8, 1911. Her disappearance was the subject of intense police investigation over three states, with massive newspaper coverage. Her body was found a month later. Elsie, under the name Annie Ehrenberg became one of the principal characters in Henry Darger's immense novel The Story of the Vivian Girls in the Realms of the Unreal. Joseph Wilson the 60-year-old station master was shot dead at Lintz Green Railway Station in the northeast of England on October 7, 1911. His murder sparked one of the largest murder investigations in northeast England. One suspect in the Villisca Axe murders, which claimed eight lives in the Iowa town on the night of June 9, 10, 1912, was tried twice and ultimately acquitted. Other suspects have been considered but history has largely exonerated them as well. The body of Mary Fagan, 13, was found strangled and raped early on April 27, 1913 at the Atlanta, Georgia, pencil factory where she worked. Suspicion eventually fell on Leo Frank, manager of the factory, who was convicted of the murder later that year. When his death sentence was commuted to life in 1915, Frank was abducted from prison and lynched, in what is considered one of the worst episodes of anti-Semitism in the United States. Historians have come to believe he was wrongly convicted, and in 1986 he was pardoned. It is believed that a janitor who testified against Frank and served a year in prison as an accessory after the fact was the real killer. Chinese journalist Huang Yuan Yang, 30 was shot and killed in San Francisco on December 25, 1915. No arrests were ever made. Most theories about the responsible parties suggest that it was a political assassination, since Huang had increasingly been in conflict with the government of the newly established Republic of China after initially supporting it. John Bamford was considered the prime suspect in the 1917 Wanangata murders in East Gippsland. Victoria, Australia, however, his body was found early the following year. The cause of death was a gunshot wound to the head. Several theories have been advanced, but no suspects have ever been identified. In the late 1970s, Barclay's son, 
who later worked for a mutual friend of the two who had been an early suspect, made a statement suggesting he knew who the murderers were as well but declining to identify them. De La Hay, principal of the Newington House School in Madras, India, was shot dead in his bed at the school on March 15, 1919. One defendant was acquitted after a highly publicized trial, no others have ever been identified. James Colosimo, 42, gangster who led a precursor to the Chicago outfit. He was shot and killed at his cafe on May 11, 1920. No one was ever charged with the killing, it is believed that Al Capone, then one of Colosimo's henchmen, was involved. Joseph Bown Elwell, 46, a bridge player, was shot and killed inside his locked house on June 11, 1920. One clearly false confession the next year was discarded, and no other suspects ever were identified. The intense media interest in the case inspired the development of the locked room murder subgenre of detective fiction. Italian anarchists were suspected in the Wall Street bombing of September 16, 1920, which killed 38, making it the deadliest terrorist act in U.S. history at that point. Despite a number of arrests, no one was ever charged. One likely suspect, who was never arrested, fled to Italy shortly afterwards and never returned to the U.S. Chrissy Venn, a 13-year-old girl who was murdered on or around February 21, 1921 near the township of North Modern, near Ulverstone, Tasmania, her body was found in a hollow tree. George William King who claimed the incriminating marks on his hands were from injuries sustained during the three-day search for Venn, was acquitted after a trial which was the first change of venue ever granted in Tasmania. No other suspects were ever named. Little Lord Fauntleroy, an unidentified boy who was murdered in late 1920 or early 1921 and was found on March 8, 1921. He was killed by a blow to the head and drowning after being dropped into a quarry in Waukesha, Wisconsin, United States. Anthony Dandria, 48, an early Chicago Mafia boss, was shot and killed while entering his apartment on May 11, 1921, near the end of the city's Alderman's Wars. No one was ever charged or named as a suspect. Professional golfer James Douglas Edgar, 36, whose book The Gate to Golf changed the sport considerably, died shortly after he was found on an Atlanta street late at night on August 8, 1921, with a leg wound. Reports that this was the consequence of his involvement in a love triangle have never led to any suspects being identified. William Desmond Taylor, a popular Irish-born American actor and director of silent movies, Killed by a shot in the back on February 1, 1922 inside his bungalow. His murder, along with other Hollywood scandals, such as the Roscoe Arbuckle trial, led to a frenzy of sensational and often fabricated newspaper reports, and a deathbed confession of dubious veracity. The Hinterkaffeck Murders Hinterkaffeck, a small farmstead between the Bavarian towns of Ingolstadt and Schrabenhausen, approximately 70 kilometers north of Munich, was the scene of one of the most puzzling crimes in German history. On the evening of March 31, 1922, the six inhabitants of the farm were killed with a pickaxe, and the murder is still unsolved. Edward Hall and Eleanor Mills, both of New Brunswick, New Jersey, were found dead of gunshot wounds in a field in nearby Franklin Township on September 16, 1922. Hall, an Episcopalian priest, had apparently been having an extramarital affair with Mills, who sang in the church choir. His wife and her brothers were charged with the crime. After one of the first trials to attract heavy media interest, they were acquitted of all charges. No other suspects were ever identified. The plane crash that killed early aviator B.H. DeLay, 31 a pioneering stunt pilot, on July 4, 1923 in Venice, California, was found to have been the result of sabotage to the aircraft. 
no one was ever formally charged or identified as a suspect. The Lava Lake murders occurred in January 1924 near Little Lava Lake in central Oregon. The victims were Edward Nichols, 50, Roy Wilson, 35, and Dewey Morris, 25. The three were working as fur trappers and staying in a private cabin while trapping animals over the winter. Their bodies were discovered in April 1924 in Big Lava Lake, where they had been placed under the ice sometime shortly after Christmas 1923. The men had been bludgeoned with a claw hammer and shot to death. Father Hubert Dom, a popular local Catholic priest, was shot dead at an intersection in Bridgeport, Connecticut, on February 4, 1924. A local vagrant, Harold Israel, was arrested and charged with the crime, but at trial prosecutor Homer Still Cummings, later U.S. Attorney General, not only dropped the case but discredited the evidence the city's police department had collected against Israel. No other suspects have ever been named, 30 years later a witness to the killing said it was not Israel but refused to identify the real killer out of fear for their life. The Janet Smith Case on July 26, 1924, the 22-year-old Scottish nursemaid was found dead of a gunshot wound to the temple in a home in an exclusive neighborhood of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Although she was initially labeled a suicide, despite much evidence to the contrary, her friends were able to get the case reopened and deemed a murder. The initial suspect, Chinese houseboy Wang Fun Sing was kidnapped and tortured for weeks in an unsuccessful attempt to extract a confession, causing a major scandal when it was discovered that various police officials and respected members of society were directly involved. Wang was eventually tried and acquitted for lack of evidence. A law was proposed, banning the employment of Asians and white women in the same household, but failed to pass. Responsibility for the October 29, 1924, bombing of a Canadian Pacific train in British Columbia that killed Russian émigré Peter Verigin, 65, leader of the pacifist Dukabors, along with seven others including a member of the provincial legislature. Government investigators believed the culprits were Verigin's rivals among the Dukabors, while the remaining members of the sect accused the government of committing the crime. No suspects have ever been officially named. 1925-1949 The killing of Lizzie O'Neill in Dublin was the June 1925 shooting of a sex worker who was also known as Honor Bright. Two suspects were brought to trial, but were acquitted. The Mila Flores Massacre Three Detroit gangsters were shot down in the Mila Flores apartments on March 28, 1927. The killings are widely believed to have been a revenge attack by members of the Purple Gang, two members were arrested the next day but never charged. Mordech Halsman, a Latvian Jewish dentist, was hiking with his son Philippe in Austria's Tyrol on September 10, 1928, when he slipped and fell down a ravine. He survived the fall, but when Philippe returned with assistance, he had been beaten to death and robbed. Philippe was convicted of manslaughter and sentenced to four years in prison in a trial marked by the anti-Semitism prevalent in Austria at the time. After prominent Jews of the time, including Albert Einstein and Sigmund Freud drew attention to the case, Hall's man was pardoned and emigrated to France to begin his career as a photographer. No other suspect in his father's murder has ever been identified. Jewish gangster Arnold Rothstein, 46 an avid gambler best remembered for his alleged role fixing the 1919 World Series, died on November 6, 1928, of gunshot wounds inflicted the day before during a New York City business meeting. He refused to identify his killer to police. A fellow gambler who was believed to have ordered the hit as retaliation for Rothstein's failure to pay a large debt from a recent poker game, Rothstein in turn claimed it had been fixed was tried and acquitted. No other suspects have ever emerged. 
It is historically accepted that Al Capone ordered the St. Valentine's Day massacre of seven other gangsters in Chicago on February 14, 1929. But neither he nor any of the suspected gunmen, many of whom were dead themselves within a few years, were ever formally prosecuted for the crime. The Wallace case was the unsolved murder of Liverpool housewife Julia Wallace on January 20, 1931. Her husband, William Herbert Wallace, was convicted and sentenced to hang, but the verdict was overturned on appeal the first such instance in British legal history. The chess-like quality of the puzzle has attracted a host of crime writers. Raymond Chandler said, The Wallace case is the nonpareil of all murder mysteries. I call it the impossible murder because Wallace couldn't have done it, and neither could anyone else. The Wallace case is unbeatable, it will always be unbeatable. Harry C. Beasley, 42, a Medal of Honor recipient who later became a Newark, Ohio, police officer, died after being shot while confronting robbers on July 2, 1931. No one was ever identified as a suspect. On September 12, 1931, Arthur Brennan, 50, a World War I veteran and early Australian rules football player, was shot and killed while struggling with a burglar he was trying to apprehend on a neighbor's property. After investigating for three months, police announced they could not find a suspect. No arrests were ever made. The murder of Vera Page occurred on December 14, 1931. Page was a 10-year-old schoolgirl from Notting Hill, London, who was last seen walking towards her own house, having visited her aunt to show her new swimming certificates she had been awarded. Her raped and strangled body was found two days later. Despite strong circumstantial evidence linking a local man named Percy Rush to the crime, a jury recorded an open verdict of murder by person or persons unknown. Jack Legs Diamond 34, American gangster, was found shot to death in the Albany, New York, apartment of his mistress on the morning of December 18, 1931. While he had many enemies among the underworld who wanted him dead, Daniel P. O'Connell, boss of the city's political machine, claimed in an interview with author William Kennedy four decades later that he had ordered the killing after Diamond ignored police warnings to stay out of the city's rackets. The case remains officially unsolved. Vampire murder case is the nickname given to the case of an unknown assailant who committed the unsolved murder of a prostitute who was found dead with a crushed skull in her apartment on May 4, 1932 in Stockholm, Sweden. Police noted that someone had drunk her blood. The body of Eric Jan Hunnison, 43 an Austrian Jewish publicist who claimed to have psychic powers and was a confidant of Hitler, was found in a field in Zossen, Germany, outside Berlin in late April 1933, a month after he had last been seen on March 25 in the city. He had been shot execution style, twice, in the back of the head at close range. No one was ever charged with the crime although it is believed that it may have been carried out by stormtroopers. Possible motives range from resentment of Hunnison's relationship with Hitler to a desire to keep secret inside information on the Reichstag fire, which Hunnison claimed to have foreseen. Left-wing Zionist leader Haim Arlazorov was shot and killed late on the night of June 16, 1933 while walking with his wife on the beach of Tel Aviv in what is now Israel but was at the time British Mandate Palestine. Three men belonging to a rival political faction were arrested and tried, all were ultimately acquitted. Theories as to who was really responsible have ranged from the Soviets or Nazis to a failed attempt to rape Arla Zorov's wife. Welsh journalist Gareth Jones, 29, was killed by bandits who had been holding him for ransom near what is now Zhangjiago, China, on April 12, 1935. A fellow journalist with him had been released two weeks earlier, ostensibly to collect the money demanded. 
since Jones had two years before been banned from the Soviet Union for life after being the first journalist to report on the 1932-33 Ukrainian famine, it has been believed that the Soviet NKVD had him killed in retaliation, as some of those connected to the kidnapping were its agents. No suspects have ever been identified. American journalist Walter Liggett, 49, was shot in Minneapolis, Minnesota, on December 9, 1935, while investigating connections between that state's governor and organized crime. No suspects were ever identified. The body of Pamela Werner, 19, only daughter of British China scholar E.T.C. Werner, was found near the Fox Tower in Beijing on the morning of January 8, 1937, she had last been seen alive leaving an ice skating rink nearby the night before. After being killed by several blows to the head, her body had been severely mutilated, with several internal organs removed, among them her heart, by someone with professional skills, and sexually violated. An unusual joint British-Chinese investigation found some possible suspects among the city's foreign community, where she was socially prominent, but was unable to develop any evidence to the point of arrest before the coroner officially concluded that the killers were probably Chinese and closed the case, after the Japanese occupied the city a few months later there would be no further official investigations. E.T.C. Werner funded an unofficial investigation which identified an American dentist as the killer, his conclusion was endorsed by Midnight in Peking, Paul French's 2011 book about the case. However, some of the dentist's descendants have strongly disputed that finding. Other theories of the case suggest Japanese revenge for the death of two army officers allegedly at British hands the summer before, mistaken identity by blue shirts intending to kill Helen Foster Snow, or a local serial killer. Russian banker and politician Dmitry Novichine, 47, was stabbed to death while walking his dog in Paris's Bois de Boulogne on the morning of January 25, 1937. No suspects have ever been identified, although theories as to who might be responsible suggest the Soviet NKVD, as while he had initially worked with the communists despite not sharing their ideology he had broken with them under Stalin and was reportedly about to reveal evidence which would have shown that some prominent political prisoners were in fact innocent of the crimes with which they had been charged. Another theory implicates the French fascist organization La Cagoule, which did not like a Jew closely advising the French government on economic matters and supposedly hoped that his death would be blamed on communist operatives appearing to strengthen La Cagoule's claims of foreign communists operating in France. On May 16, 1937, Laetitia Touros, 29, was found fatally stabbed in an empty first-class car on the Paris metro when it stopped at Port Doré. The crime received considerable media attention as not only was it the first homicide on the metro, Touros had boarded the train at the previous station, meaning the crime had to have been committed in just minutes. Further investigation found that she was leading a double life, working a factory job during the day under her own name but then at a dance hall at night under another name, and making frequent if discreet visits to the Italian embassy. Eventually it was revealed that she was a spy, infiltrating La Cagoule, who it is believed may have discovered this and killed her. The onset of World War II two years later put a stop to the investigation before any suspects were identified, it has not been reopened. Killing of Margaret Martin, 19, of Kingston, Pennsylvania, on December 19, 1938. Many suspects were investigated, but nobody was ever convicted. Pete Panto, 28 a labor leader who had fought mafia control of the International Longshoremen's Association local on the Brooklyn docks, was found in a Lindhurst, New Jersey lime pit in January 1941. He had not been seen since leaving his house on July 14, 1939. No one was ever arrested in the case, one suspect who was questioned was found dead a month later. On March 24, 1941, Jocelyn Hay, 
22nd Earl of Errol, 39, was found shot dead behind the wheel of his car at a crossroads in Kenya. Reporting on the murder investigation outraged the British public with its accounts of carousing and partying by Lord Errol and fellow members of the Happy Valley set while the home front endured the hardships of World War II. Sir Jock Delves Broughton, another peer in Happy Valley who Hay might have cuckolded, was acquitted after being tried with a weak case later that year, he committed suicide the following year. No other suspects have ever been named. The crime has inspired several dramatizations, most notably the 1987 film White Mischief, which have attempted to offer solutions. Carlo Tresca, 63, an Italian-American labor leader who led opposition to fascism, Stalinism and mafia control of unions, was shot dead at a Manhattan intersection on the night of January 11, 1943. Given the enemies he had made and their propensity for violence, the list of potential suspects was long, however the investigation was incomplete and no one was ever officially named. Historians believe the most likely suspect was mobster Carmine Galanti, later acting boss of the Bonanno family, seen fleeing the scene, who had likely acted on the orders of a Bonanno underboss and fascist sympathizer Tresca had threatened to expose. The beaten and partially burnt body of Sir Harry Oakes, 68, an American-born British gold mine owner and philanthropist, was found in his mansion in Nassau, Bahamas on July 8, 1943. His son-in-law, Count Alfred de Marigny, was arrested shortly afterwards based on evidence allegedly uncovered by two Miami police. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.